right children now we are going to discuss about wind as the next energy source now we all are familiar with wind do you remember we made the wind propeller and we made it work using the uh, energy contained in wind it means energy is contained in wind therefore we can use this energy contained in wind to do our day to day activities okay children so what are the other uses of wind energy in our day to day activities look at this picture what is this person doing here it's given winnowing paddy what is the meaning of winnowing paddy remember children when it comes to paddy so the rice grain is covered with an outer cover this is known as chaff this is the rice grain and chaff is the outer cover okay sometimes there are some rice grains only the chaff is present only the outer cover is present inside empty or inside half filled so what do you think about the weight of the quality or good rice grain and that chaff when you consider the half filled rice grains or unfilled rice grains uh, they are less heavier than this quality or good rice grains however we have to separate these two types of rice grains okay good ones from the bad ones how do we separate these good rice grains from the bad rice grains or unfilled rice grains that is known as winnowing paddy separating good rice grains from the unfilled or half filled rice grains is known as winnowing paddy and that is basically done by using wind so how do we do this i told you when it comes to uh, good rice grains they are heavier than the chaff or uh, unfilled or half filled rice grains so we can make these rice grains however the entire amount of rice grains we can make them fall against wind right so when they fall when wind blows against this rice grains what will happen this chaff will be taken away with the wind that is because it is uh, it is light in weight understand children so this is how farmers use the help of the wind for the uh, to separate these uh, good and bad rice grains okay so if the natural wind is not present sometimes they can even use a fan okay children right what are the other instances we can use uh, wind to do our day to day activities children we can use wind to dry clothes and dry grains as well how do we use wind in order to dry clothes children now basically we learn that we can dry clothes and we can dry grains with the help of the solar energy so what about the wind how can wind help with drying these substances now you all know because of the solar energy let's say now these are the clothes that we have to dry right so because of the solar heat because of the sun's heat the water present in these wet clothes they get evaporated evaporation means liquid water turns into gaseous water or water vapor okay so then what happens because of evaporation of water this water vapor will present come out of the clothes and they will present in the atmosphere or the environment now if wind is present wind can take this water vapor particles away from these clothes it means around these clothes there is more and more space for more and more water vapor to come out and gather in that way drying process will be very efficient okay children even though basically drying clothes is done by uh, the solar energy wind also can help with increasing the efficiency of drying clothes understand children right we have to do an activity now let's use wind energy to do work we are already familiar with this type of activity after making the wind propeller earlier here also we are going to do an activity uh, to study the wind energy how wind energy can used to do work okay so what do we need we need two spoke wires and we need an empty ballpoint pen actually we need the barrel of the ballpoint pen okay 
and we need pair of scissors and we need a piece of metal of round shape round shape metal okay and we need a piece of twine and a small weight okay we will write we need two spoke wires two spoke wires empty ballpoint pen empty ballpoint pen and we need a pair of scissors round shaped metal piece of twine and a small weight okay children two spoke wires empty ballpoint pen pair of scissors round shaped metal piece of twine and a small weight remember this activity is very interesting and very easy to do right so you all can do this activity at home understand children now i'll show you how to do this activity okay so under the method look at the setup this is the setup that we have to make using the materials okay prepare a wind propeller from the circular metal piece as shown in the figure look at this one how to prepare this one first of all you have to take the circular metal piece and you have to cut it so look at these dotted lines you have to cut it along these dotted lines but you should not completely cut it off right so only halfway you are going to cut it along these dotted lines after that you can lift each part and twist it a little in order to make it the shape of a wind propeller okay you have to lift each part now there are four parts you can lift each part and you can twist it a little thereby it will uh, give the shape of a propeller okay next step now make a hole in the middle of the wind propeller like this and now remove the ink crud of the pen and pass the spoke wire through the barrel of the pen look at this one this is the barrel of the pen barrel of the pen and this is the spoke wire so you have to pass this spoke wire through the barrel of the pen okay then fix the wind propeller to the barrel of the pen as given in the picture to the other side of the pen you have to fix this wind propeller okay then tie the weight with a thread and fix the other end of the thread to the pen tightly now this is the piece of twine this is the small weight small weight so one end of the thread you, thread you have to uh, connect to the weight and the other end to the uh, barrel of the pen okay tie the weight with a thread and fix the other end of the thread to the pen tightly okay after that use the other spoke wire to hang the prepared equipment now this is the second spoke wire i told you we need two spoke wires okay this is the other spoke wire we can use it as a handle right children so after that use the other spoke wire to hang the prepared equipment and take it to a place where wind is available understand and observe how the weight is lifted with the help of the wind now when we do this activity in the lab instead of the source of wind i am going to use a hair dryer okay children so you will realize when i direct wind using the hair dryer towards this wind propeller this wind propeller will rotate okay when the wind propeller rotates you will realize this pen tube or barrel of the pen also rotates along with the uh, wind propeller 
as this one uh, one end of the uh, string is tied to this uh, barrel of the pen then what will happen this string or twine will nicely wind around this pen so when the uh, thread nicely winds around this pen what will happen the small weight will get lifted down now we are going to do that activity okay children now i am going to show you that wind energy can be used to do work look at this setup children here we have a wind propeller fixed to an empty pen tube and to the other side of the pen tube i have fixed a, a small weight using a thread so what happens if we direct wind towards this wind propeller this will rotate and you can see what happens so in order to demonstrate wind i am going to use this hair dryer for now watch carefully what happens children so because of the wind provided by this equipment what happens the wind propeller rotates and this weight gets lifted up okay so it's very clear now lifting a weight is a type of work how did we do this work using the help of wind understand with the help of the wind we lifted this small weight it means wind can be used to do work okay children so you observed what happens when we operate this small setup so what happened when i directed the hair dryer towards this small fan or small wind propeller what happened it started to rotate and along with that this pen tube also rotates and when the pen tube rotates what happens children this thread winds up around the pen and it makes the small weight gets lifted up okay so lifting a weight is a type of work that we can do so how did we do this work children with the help of the wind okay so lifting a weight is a type of work so in order to do any type of work we need energy so in this case the energy is given by the wind so it's very clear that we can use wind in order to do our day to day activities what are the other instances that we can use uh, a uh, wind in order to do our day to day activities we will see right so here the same uh, thing we discussed given you will observe the rotation of the wind propeller and the lifting of the weight when wind blows okay so it's obvious that we can do work with the help of the wind understand so look at these two pictures children this is a wind mill in the past people did not have electricity they did not have machines therefore in order to do their work they used different different other methods using a windmill was that type of method okay children so these type of windmills now you can see these large blades right a windmill used to grind grains these type of windmills were used to grind grains when the wind blows against these fans what happens this blade starts to rotate and then inside now this is the uh, it is connected to the grinding mill certain machine works when this uh, blades rotate right that machine is fixed to the uh, blades of this machine and therefore when the wind blows these blades rotate and therefore using the energy of the wind people could uh, grind their grains not only that in order to pump water also the same method was used okay so in ancient times to grind grains to pump water these type of wind mills were used understand nowadays we use these type of blades rotating blades that is rotated with the help of the wind in order to generate electricity these type of uh, power plants are known as wind power plants okay children so look at this picture here it's given generation of electricity using wind energy here what happens you can see large blades in this power plant right so when the wind blows what happens this propeller like structure rotates so it is connected to a generator right it is connected to a generator or a dynamo then what happens when this part rotates the part containing the dynamo also rotates right so there is a magnet connected to the dynamo so this propeller is connected to that magnet so when this wind propeller rotates what happens children when this large blade is rotated that magnet the large magnet present in that dynamo also rotates 
when that large magnet rotates it can generate electricity understand children so this is a very important method of generating electricity and generating electricity in this way is eco friendly and at the same time wind energy is a type of renewable energy source what is the meaning of a renewable energy source children renewable energy source means a certain type of energy source that we can obtain again and again okay children right so remember in order to obtain in order to generate electricity using these type of wind power plants we have to install these type of setups in the areas with strong winds okay even in sri lanka we have these type of wind power plants in uh, hambantota and puttalam understand right so large windmills are operated using wind energy in ancient times people used this energy to grind grains and to pump water we discussed this okay children when the windmill operates we can rotate the parts of a generator and thereby we can generate electricity right this can be used to generate electricity too so these types of energy power plants are available in sri lanka as well here hambantota puttalam okay children isn't this very interesting now wind energy is a type of natural source of energy we can use it to produce or generate electricity and we can do our work using that generated electricity how interesting is that now we are going to watch a video clip about this uh, wind power plants right children can you all see the wind power plants you all can see how these large blades of the turbine rotates according to the uh, direction of the wind so these turbines are connected to the dynamos and thereby we can generate electricity so you all can see there are a number of uh, turbines are there in the same area we have an assignment to do now this is very easy for you all prepare a list of activities where wind energy is used we already discussed there are a number of activities number of things that we can do using the help of the wind what are the activities children we will write some of them now i am going to write some of the examples that we learn but you all can find other examples as well you can read books you can uh, read other articles and you can find more information okay children right so prepare a list of activities where wind energy is used so you all know that uh, we can use wind energy uh, to generate electricity to generate electricity what is children so in, uh, in the past uh, wind mills were used to grind grains and to pump water to grind grains to pump water to dry clothes and grains let's try to dry clothes dry clothes and another one you can write uh, to sail boats boats can be sailed using the help of the wind okay to sail boats okay children to generate electricity to grind grains to pump water to dry clothes to sail boats there are other examples too you can fly kites using the help of the wind okay and for we know wind paddy these are also examples that's why i said you can write more examples than this right children okay our next source of energy is energy stored in water right we will go through this during ancient times people used running water to do certain work such as to grind grains and to operate sawmills 
some of you must have seen something called water wheels right most of the ancient people they use these type of water wheels to do their work so what happens the water wheel had blades like this when the water flows what happens with the flow of water this starts rotating right when water falls onto this uh, wheel what happens the blades it starts rotating the wheel starts rotating as the wheel is connected with the certain machines that can use to grind grains what happens children you can operate the machine when the uh, water wheel rotates okay children so that is how during the ancient times people use this water wheel or with the help of the water uh, they could grind their grains okay and also they could operate their sawmills as well understand so they used water to rotate a turbine and thereby generate electricity nowadays also we generate electricity in the hydropower plants same type of function takes place there we are going to learn all these things under this topic okay we have to activity to engage in to study this better right so the activity is let's make a model of a turbine right what do we need to make this turbine we need a plastic bottle we need a cork stopper and a spoke wire and we need some yogurt spoons and we need a cardboard circle and binder glue okay we will write plastic bottle cork stopper spoke wire yogurt spoons We need a piece of cardboard and we have to cut a circle out of that cardboard. We will write cardboard circle. Cardboard circle. And bind the glue. Right. Plastic bottle. Coke stopper, spoke wire, yogurt spoons, a cardboard circle and binder glue. So how to do this activity? Let's see. So look at the method. This is the setup or this is the apparatus that we have to make using the materials given. Right. Paste the cardboard circle at the bottom of the plastic bottle. This is the plastic bottle. This is the uh, cardboard wheel. So you can color it with different colors. Okay, this is the cardboard wheel, plastic bottle. And make a small hole at the center of the bottom, which is similar to the size of the spoke wire. Right, so that you could uh, insert the spoke wire through this bottle. Okay, children. So this is the spoke wire. Spoke wire. Okay. Make another hole at the center of the cork stopper also. Right, this is the cork stopper. So that you have to insert this cork wire through the bottle, through the cardboard circle, then through the bottle and then to the uh, cork stopper. Okay, right. Now fix the yogurt spoons to the cork at similar distances. Similar distances, you all can see here, four spoons are fixed. You should fix them at a similar distance, right. So with the knife, you can make small cuts and you can insert these yogurt spoons. Understand? Then fix the cork to the bottle. So after fixing the yogurt spoons to the cork stopper, you have to fix the cork stopper to the bottle. Okay. Now test whether this model of a turbine rotates by holding it to run in water. Understand? Now you can pour some water over these blades. Now this is similar to a turbine 
okay now these uh, yogurt spoons are equal to the blades of a turbine understand so we have to pour water over these yogurt spoons so we have to pour water from at a certain height and we can observe this will this structure will start to rotate now we are going to do that activity right children here we have a model of a turbine look at this one this is a plastic bottle and this is a cardboard circle and this is a spoke wire and a rubber stopper and these are yogurt spoons fixed to this rubber stopper okay you can rotate it so how to make this turbine work children we can make this turbine work using water look what happens when I pour water over these plastic spoons, what happens? It rotates. So what should I do if I want to increase the speed of rotation? See, I can lift this beaker up and then I can pour this water. You all can see the speed of rotation increases. And at the same time, another method of increasing the speed of rotation is I can pour more water over this. Then also speed of rotation increases. So I can increase the increase and decrease the speed of rotation using the amount of water uh, that I pour over this one. It means in order to rotate this uh, turbine, we need energy. That energy was supplied by this flowing water. It means that flowing water contains energy. So this type of function or this type of activity takes place in a, a hydropower plant. So these large turbines are there. So these large turbines are rotated using flowing water. So these turbines are connected to dynamos and so electricity can be generated when these turbines are rotated. I hope this is very clear now. Right children. So you observed what happens. I poured some water over these yogurt spoons and then what happened children? The structure, this turbine started to work. Okay children, this is a water wheel or water turbine. Understand because we can make it work with a flow of water. So it was very clear how to increase the speed of rotation. How to increase the speed of rotation children. If you want to rotate it with high speed, what are the things that you can do? Early also during the activity I showed you, what are the things that you can do? Number one, now I told you, you have to pour this water from at a height. You can increase the height. It means that this, when the distance between this water vessel and the yogurt spoons increase, what will happen? It will gain more energy. That water will gain more energy. Okay, water will gain more energy and therefore it can give more energy to the uh, yogurt spoons or this turbine. So the turbine rotates faster. Understand that is the first thing we can do in order to increase the speed of rotation of this turbine. The first step we can do is we can increase the uh, height of the water stored. Right? And the second thing you can do is you can pour more water. When you pour less amount of water, the speed reduces. But when you pour more water, what will happen? Because of the flow of water increases, what will happen children? Again, the speed of rotation will increase. Another change you can do in this setup in order to increase the speed. You can increase the number of yogurt spoons fixed here. I told you, if you consider this as a turbine, the blades of the turbines are the yogurt spoons, right? So increasing the number of yogurt spoons means increasing the number of blades present in the turbine. Okay, children. So what are the three changes that we can do in order to increase the speed of rotation of this setup? Number one, we can increase the height of uh, the stored water. It means you can take the water vessel more and more up, okay? And number two, you can pour more and more water. The amount of water poured over the yogurt spoons can be increased. And number three, you can increase the number of yogurt spoons fixed to this setup. Understand children? Right children, look at this diagram. This is a structure of a hydropower station. 
Do you remember I told you we generate hydroelectricity using water turbines? This is the structure of how to do that. This is a structure of a hydropower plant. Okay, children, we'll go through this one. Energy stored in running water is utilized in hydropower stations to generate electricity. So how does this happen? When water is at a higher position, it contains more energy. Do you remember, I explained during the previous activity, I told you that in order to increase the speed of rotation of the turbine, you can increase the height of the stored water. Why does that happen, children? Remember, when we store something at a height, when something goes away and away from the ground, it stores more and more energy. This energy a certain object stores based on the location is known as potential energy. Okay, it is called potential energy. What are the examples for potential energy, children? Let's say there is a building with three floors. Let's say a child, when the child is in the ground floor, he has certain type of energy stored. When he goes to the next floor, it means the height increases. The child is go away from the ground. Right? So what happens when the child goes to the next floor? He gains more potential energy. When the child goes to the next floor or the top floor, he has more and more potential energy. Okay, children, when something is a person or an object, when something is stored at a high, when the position changes, it stores more and more energy and that is known as potential energy. What are the examples? Uh, now we consider fruits on the trees, they also have because they are also at a certain height. They also contain certain amount of potential energy. Okay, children, so here the same thing happens. Now, Look at this picture. You all can see this is the tank or this is the reservoir. And this is the small gate that, uh, that which uh, lets water to flow through. That This is known as penstock. Right? This is the dam. Because of the dam, the dam blocks the flow of water to this side. And you all can see this reservoir, the tank is located at a uh, upper position, high elevation. Right? And at a lower elevation, lower position, you all can see the turbine is located. Right now, this is the turbine. You all can see the turbine. Now, this is the axis of the turbine. Axis of the turbine is connected to the generator, right, or the dynamo. So, what happens when the water flows through this canal and it reaches the turbine? The turbine rotates because of the speed of the water, right? So, when the turbine rotates, this axis also starts rotating, right? The axis starts rotating too. When the axis rotates, it is connected to the large magnet present in the dynamo. The large magnet of the dynamo also rotates and thereby it can generate electricity. And that gen electricity is distributed. Okay, children. So, what is the reason? Now, why can't we... Uh, make this tank at the same level of the turbine children. Now let's say if this is the tank and if this is the turbine. If this is the tank and if this is the turbine, if they are at the same level, what will happen children? What do you think about the flow of this water? Flow of this water will be less. Right? When this water is stored at a height, because it gains more and more potential energy, when all of a sudden, when that amount of water flows to, flows downwards, what will happen? It gains more and more energy. If it contains more energy, the turbine can rotate with high speed. If the turbine can rotate with high speed, it can make the dynamo work faster. If the dynamo can work faster, it can generate more electricity. Okay, children, that is the importance of rotating this turbine with high speed. So what happens when the speed reduces? The amount of electricity generated also reduces. Now here you can see, look at the height of the water level. Right? 
So water is stored at a height. Because of the height, it has more potential energy. So from this place, water starts to flow towards the turbine. It means water starts to move towards the turbine. So remember children, there is another important type of energy. Any type of moving object contains a special type of energy called kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Right? So potential energy is the type of energy stored at uh, objects at a height or at a upper position. What about the kinetic energy? Kinetic energy means the energy contained in moving objects. Okay, children. So what happens when this water is stored at a height like this in the tank? It has potential energy. When from this place to this place, when the water flows, it means water moves. This potential energy converts to kinetic energy. So because of the kinetic energy of water, turbine rotates. Now turbine also rotates. It means turbine also moves. When the turbine moves, the kinetic energy of water becomes the kinetic energy of turbine. Right? So you all know that because, because of the movement of the turbine, because of the rotation of the turbine, it can make the dynamo work and electricity is generated. So what is the next type of energy generated? Electrical energy. So what are the changes take place of the forms of energy here? Potential energy converts to kinetic energy and kinetic energy converts to electrical energy. You all have to memorize this. This is how energy converts when electricity is generated. Okay, children, let's write down that one. So what is the energy conversion takes place uh, during uh, production of hydroelectricity? Potential energy. Potential energy. It converts to kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. And then it finally converts to electrical energy. Electrical energy. Now this is something additional but this is equally important children. Understand? So that is why if we can't move this turbine faster if we do not store this water at an upper position, at a higher elevation. That is the reason we have to build the tank in an upper position than that of the turbine, than the power plant. Understand children? So again what is the process takes place here children? Water is stored at an upper position, so it has potential energy. From this penstock, it starts to flow towards a turbine. So then the potential energy converts to kinetic energy of water. So because of the kinetic energy of water, it starts to rotate the turbine. And when the turbine rotates, that is connected with the dynamo. Dynamo also works and dynamo can generate electricity. Okay, children. So I told you water should be stored at a high. During drought seasons, what happens, children? During the drought season, the level of water reduces. Let's say that water comes up to this level. So then what happens, children? The potential energy stored in this water is less. That is because you all can see, children, the water is at the same level as the turbine. So what happens? Because if you want, if the water needs to get more and more potential energy, it has to go above the turbine. But here during the drought seasons, as the water level reduces, what happens? It reduces the amount of potential energy stored. So therefore what happens? This turbine cannot rotate faster because this potential energy converts to kinetic energy. If less amount of potential energy is contained, only less amount of kinetic energy or moving energy is created. It means the speed is less. Right? If the speed of the water is less, it will not make the turbine rotate faster. So I told you only if the turbine rotates faster, we can generate more and more electricity. Okay, children. So that is why during the drought seasons, there are problems with supplying adequate amounts of electricity. Okay? Right.
we have another assignment. So to do this assignment, we can use the same setup we used in the previous activity, okay? So let's make a mini hydropower station. Now we discussed the structure of a hydropower station or hydropower plant. We all know that there's a reservoir, there's a turbine, there's a dynamo likewise, okay? So let's make a mini hydropower station. For this activity, you can use the turbine model which you have already prepared in the first activity, right? Fix a 2 cm long ball point pin to the axis of the spoke wire. Now we have to use the same setup. From this side, you have to fix about 2 cm long ball point ten, pen tube, right? Ball point pen tube, you can cut uh, it to up to like 2 cm and you have to fix it to one end right axis of the spoke wire. Then fix an axle of a small motor. You have to take a small motor and the axle. Axle should be inserted, fixed to this uh, pen tube, right? Then fix an axle of a small motor to the other end of the pen, pen tube and connect a circuit of a birthday card, right? Now you must have seen uh, there are certain greeting cards, birthday cards. When you open the card, there is a music that plays. That happens because of a special uh, circuit that is fixed to that card. So we have to take that type of circuit, right? So this is the circuit. We will write circuit of a birthday card. This is the circuit of a birth, circuit of that type of birthday card. Okay, right. Now connect the circuit of a birthday card to the terminal of the motor. So this is the axle of the motor to the terminal of the motor. To the other side, you have to fix this small circuit of a musical birthday card. Right. Now you can activate the turbine. So how to activate the turbine? You all know that you can pour water from a height. Like before, you can pour water from a height. So you can observe what happens when we do this activity. Now earlier when we used this turbine, we did not use this part. Only the turbine part we used. Right? So when we, uh, during this activity, additionally we fixed to the same, same turbine, additionally we fixed this motor and the small circuit. Now we will do that activity. Right children? Now I'm going to show you how to make a mini hydropower station. Here we have the same turbine that we used before. Now look at this one. This is the turbine and this is the spoke wire. If you observe clearly, you will see the axis of the spoke wire is connected to the axle of this small motor. Right? And from this side, using wires, this small motor is connected to this small circuit. This is a type of a circuit that we can uh, find in those uh, musical cards. You all know that there are some birthday cards and other greeting cards. When you open them, uh, it plays a music. So this is that type of circuit, okay? So what happens? In order to play music here, it should get electricity. So I am going to make it play now. We will see. So here we have a vessel of water. Now, if I take this vessel, you know that this amount of water will go to a higher position. So, water stored at a higher position, it has, what is the energy children? Yes, that is potential energy. So, when I pour this water over this turbine, what happens? So, then that stored water, the potential energy becomes kinetic energy. Now, we will do this. Okay, children. So what happened when I poured this entire amount of water over this turbine? It starts rotating. So along with that uh, rotation of this turbine, this spoke also rotates, and therefore it makes this motor, the axle of the motor, also rotates. So then the axle of the motor rotates. What happens? This motor can generate electricity. So that is why you heard the music was playing, even though this was not very intense. You heard. Uh, music was playing here. Okay children, so what is the reason? Because of the rotation of the turbine, uh, this motor axle also rotates and it can generate electricity. 
So the same function takes place in hydropower plant. So you all know in hydropower plants there are large turbines. These turbines are connected to the dynamo. So what happens when the turbines rotate because of the kinetic energy of water, this dynamo also rotates and it can generate electricity. I hope this is clear now. Right children. So you observe what happens when we pour water over these uh, yogurt spoons, what happens? This turbine rotates and then you could hear the music of the circuit. Okay, so it was very clear. Now here there is no other way to generate electricity. Now when this rotates, what happens? This axle of the uh, small motor also rotates, thereby motor can generate electricity. When the motor generates electricity, it is provided to the small circuit and it can play the music. Okay children, so when you consider this uh, structure, this entire part is equal to the turbine. And this small motor is uh, equal to the, it, can, it is similar to the uh, dynamo and it can generate electricity. Right, so this water vessel is considered as the reservoir or the tank with water. Okay children, I hope this activity is very clear now.